I'm, I'm really excited today to, to speak with you guys. And uh, uh, one of the things that I was most impressed with in 1991 when I came here was I listened to Pastor Phil talk about how he loved to have fun. And he loved, he loved how much God was a fun God. And I was, I was to totally taken aback. I love that. I love that. And then he also said he's very serious about, about keep, not keeping us where we're at, but moving and changing our lives. And so, so today, I'm going to have a little fun first. And I'm going to try a little bit of Dr. Seuss. And uh, so bear with me. But what's with the hat and the green jacket, you say? I will tell you, but first, I'm going to pray. <laughs> Jesus, we do thank you so much for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for your provision at the cross for us. That we have a chance to know you and live for you, Lord. Thank you for those who have died. Over hundreds of thousands of people who have died for us on the battlefield. Thank you, Lord, for making it possible for us to be here freely at our leisure because of what they did. <clears throat> I pray your presence would be made known in each of our lives today, Lord. Yes. Help us to hear what you would want us to hear yes. today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. How many of you guys have ever been in the presence of somebody who is considered a master? Hey? Hey? Well... We get to hear Pastor Phil preach every day. I think that's pretty masterful, so, or every week. So um, I think we've all been in the presence, honestly, of somebody who's considered a master. Uh, in my house, it's Iron Chef, right? Iron Chef, we get to, we get to see them. We get to see the masters at work doing their, doing their uh, thing. I actually would never have watched that unless I was married to Sherry. But, but I get to see it, you know, a couple times a week. Yeah, she would have never played golf, so there we go. Uh, some of our black belts, virtuosos, master builders, pool sharks, or NBA players like this guy. I think he's talking to a uh, tumbo. And he is. Masters can do it with his eyes closed, right? I mean, it's amazing what people that, I mean, can you imagine us getting up and trying to shoot a basketball with their eyes closed? Uh, it would be it would be hard, but I bet you he's practiced that before and uh, But he's a ma he was a master. He was awesome. I would love to watch him as much as I possibly could They're they're accomplished people uh, they are masters at their craft. They are incredibly driven people They're dedicated. They've strived for complete mastery and excellence in their chosen discipline I recently, the reason I'm wearing this is I recently got to go to the masters. I got to witness some masters at work. And uh, uh, it was this April. Uh, it was a very exciting time. Uh, this picture that's gonna be shown, that's actually a, a picture of where I sat right here. That bridge was up there. This is a place called Amen Corner at Augusta National. Amen Corner is, uh, uh, known there's a high percentage of people who have lost the masters at that hole right there. Uh, it's number 12 uh, It's uh, iconic. I've seen uh, Winner or leaders that you think are gonna win this tournament come to number 12 and they'll hit it in the water And then they'll hit it in the water and then they'll hit it over in the trees It is a very hard green to hit with lots of wind and swirling in the trees and it's hard to read what's going on so it's a uh, a uh, very, very, very famous hole. And uh, I will tell you, this is my only picture from the trip because they will not allow cell phones at all. They don't want anybody talking on their phones. If you get caught with your cell phone, you are banned for life. And, uh, and so I don't, I don't really have, yeah, they're serious about it. And the guy says, when you come in, he goes, if you have a cell phone, don't even attempt. That thing, you know, the, the thing like at an airport, that will, will catch you and you will never come back in your whole life. And so, uh, you know, of course, I didn't bring my cell phone in, but I don't have a camera. So these people were taking a picture on Amen Corner. They asked me to take their picture. This is on a practice round. So a Wednesday, the tournaments play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sorry, four days. And uh, on Wednesday, they allow actual cameras, but no cell phones. And so th these people asked me to take their picture, this family. And then I said, would you do one of me? 
and then send it to me, and they did, and they were, it was a real blessing. So uh, it's, a, it's a really cool spot. Many of you know that I'm a golf professional. I teach golf for a living. Uh, and so for me, this was a bucket list trip. This was something that, that uh, my wife would love to see the Masters Iron Chef somewhere, right? I mean, it, it's a... Uh, uh, it was something I, it means a lot to me to be able to see it. So if there's one tournament every professional wants to win, it's the Masters, right? There is a lot of history. What do you win? You win a green jacket, a little bit more fancy than this one. I, I can't get a green jacket from the Masters, but Pastor Phil allowed me to borrow this. So uh, they get a actual, uh, like a sports coat, green jacket. They get to wear, they get it for uh, uh, their year and then they have to give it back. And so it's uh, it's a very prestigious place. I believe there's about 300 members, and uh, uh, they are. I got some really cool stories about meeting some of those guys. You cannot golf there unless you're a member, or unless the member invites you to play with them at their expense. And so it's a uh, it's a big deal. Um, you also win over two million dollars, which that's a that's a that's a good prize. It's uh, one of the highest in the whole golf uh, world. You get to play the rest of your life at the Masters. You, you, uh, once you win, you're considered a champion and you get to play in, a, in the tournament every rest of your life until you feel like you can't compete or don't want to. Uh, my, my, uh, uh, one of the coolest things I saw was Sandy Lyle playing at the Masters and he was se he's 70 years old and he had suspenders on. And he's out there playing and he's just enjoying playing with all these 25 year old kids. And, and uh, it, was, it was really cool. <laughs> Um, they get to go to the champions dinner every year. So there's a, a, all of the past champions get to go to this prestigious dinner and uh, they sit around with Jack Nicholas, and they sit around with Tiger Woods and they sit around and they just have dinner with him. The uh, one, one thing I thought was really interesting was the, the, um, the tradition is that the winner though has to buy the dinner. And so, so they pick these different menus and Tiger Woods when he was 22 he picked burgers, fries, and a milkshake. And it, he was being cheap at that time. At that time, he wasn't a billionaire. So, so you they know, they have to pick the menu and then they buy it. Oh, they, yeah, they do buy it, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, this tournament's played in Augusta, Georgia. And um, uh, at the Augusta National Golf Club. And it is, this golf course is, is considered the best in the world as far as a tournament course. You, uh, 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 all other courses are measured by the standard. Uh, it's the most beautiful. It's got the most flowers. It's got, it's, it's an incredible place. It's got slopes that you wouldn't believe. I honestly, I, I feel like I can walk pretty well. I was absolutely beat walking up and down this course uh, as, I, as I went. It was really cool. Gary Player, who uh, uh, won it several times, he said, I always said that if there was a golf course like this in heaven, I'd want to be the head pro. Every shot is when it was in a, within a fraction of disaster. That's what makes it so great. Augusta National puts pressure on golfers not just to hit good shots, but to do so when the margin of error is very thin. I'm going to uh, share a little bit more about this, and please bear with me because it sets up the rest of the message. I know some of you could care less about golf, but think about the Iron Chef or the karate thing that you like or whatever. But if you were up here sharing, you would, you know, I was there two days. And I, it really impressed upon me. I can share a long time about this. And I, I, I just go, gosh, if I, if I, the more time I spend with Jesus, the more I'm going to be able to do this about Jesus, right? It's just, it's amazing. From the parking lot attendants to the grounds crew, from concessions to the bathrooms to the pro shop, everyone is professional and well-trained. It's an amazing place. All the best players are there. You're, you look around, there's Tiger Woods, there's, you know, Faldo, there's different, I mean, it's, it's incredible. The, uh, the people that want to be there. Uh, there's history. Bobby Jones, the greatest amateur who ever played, is considered the greatest amateur. He's the one that built the course. And so amateurs, by tradition, are always invited to the tournament. So they have to qualify, and then the best amateurs in the country play with these awesome pros. And some of them uh, actually do quite well. Fuzzy Zeller said, he's a, he's a one, you know, master's champion, um, he said, I, uh, when I, my tea time approached, when I was going to play the Masters, he said, honestly, the Masters tournament is the greatest natural laxative in the world. They get nervous. They get really nervous. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it means a lot to them. 
The things I wanted to see most when I was there, though, the par three contest, it's on Wednesday. It's that day that they show the picture. Uh, the pros get to get out. They get to be with their kids. The kids are in these little cute caddy outfits. And I wanted to see the pros as people. And it was really cool to see the families and the kids and the kids get to make these little putts and all kinds of, I wanted to see that. It was, it was really, really cool time. I wanted to see uh, uh, the golf course because I really like design. I actually came to U of I for landscape architecture and uh, uh, six credit classes and playing on the golf team didn't mix very well. So I ended up in business. So there we go. Uh, I wanted to see Tiger Woods come back. You know, he almost died a year and a half ago in a car wreck and uh, uh, people were amazed that he was even there and he shot a one under par on his very first round of the match. I was, everybody was, they couldn't believe it. The guy is an amazing competitor. I most wanted to see though, the number one thing was uh, the true masters legends of the game. Uh, they do an opening ceremony and I wanted to be there for that. And uh, uh, I think we have some pictures of them. Those guys are Jack Nicklaus. He's, he's now 86 years old. I've never seen him hit a ball, and I really wanted to see that. They have this opening ceremony where these three guys hit their opening shots, and that's the start of the Masters Tournament. So it was cool. Gary Player, uh, you saw Gary Player. He's the Black Knight, and uh, uh, he and Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus were considered the big three. Arnold Palmer died a few years ago. So now they have Tom Watson, um, who I, I got to, I ran up to the tee after standing in the rain for three and a half hours trying to wait to get in. I wanted to see this. So I ran to the tee and uh, uh, I stood right by the TV camera where they show this. And I'm standing, I got an incredible place to watch this. And um, here they come, Jack Nicholas and his wife right behind me. They had these, this line, this rope line so nobody could do it. Uh, Gary Player then uh, Tom Watson, and uh, it was like golf royalty. It seriously was, it was amazing. And um, uh, Tom Watson, when, after Jack hits, he hits a great, you know, pretty cool shot. I mean, 86 year old getting up and smacking it. Then Gary Player just act actually smashed it. That guy is uh, incredible. But then Tom Watson gets up and says, hey, I've watched this since I was, you know, a long time I've watched this and now I'm very honored to get to be with these guys. And I mean, it, it took him, he said, I'm very honored to be with these guys, put his tee in the ground, whoosh, and I, I could not believe how well he hit He smashed it, and I, farther than I can hit it, and uh, still an amazing master of the game. And so, uh, for me, this was incredible. I decided I was going to see every player in the field. I stood there, all these people around me, like this, and I'm on the back of the tee watching every shot, and I go, I guess I'm staying here. And uh, I'm in the front row, so everybody behind me, I'm tall, they can't see, you know, so they're backing around like this. I stood there for three and a half hours and watched all these people tee off and just boom, boom, boom. My, I stood there so long and I couldn't move that my feet fell asleep and I hurt so bad. My back started hurting, I hurt so bad and I'm like, I still love doing this, I wanna do this. <laughs> and, uh, and so, so finally, to the, uh, uh, real happiness of everybody else, I kneeled down on my knees. And uh, they could all see then. And, and so, so it, was, it was hilarious. And finally, I just go, you know, I gotta go to the bathroom so bad that I am gonna leave. And, and uh, so I didn't get to see everybody there, but my goal was to see everybody in the tournament hit a shot. And I, I uh, went to the concessions, went to a, 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 a stand or a bleachers, and I watched the rest of the, of the day there where I could sit and rest and my back hurt and all that, but it was great. Sat with some guys, they were there, they said, yes, this is our 38th Masters that we've been to. We come here and we sit in these bleachers every year because it's the best spot. And uh, they live right across the street. So there, it, was, it, was, it was amazing to just talk with the different people and do that. So, uh, so for me, what a, what a bucket list item, how, how awesome. <clears throat> a couple weeks later, uh, I want to, I guess I'll take this time to mention that Sherry and I go to Brenda Martin's small group. And if anybody is out there that has older kids, uh, this is a good place to come. She's an amazing lady, uh, does a great job. If you need a small group, uh, want to learn how to get through life with older kids, please come and join us. Her son, Eric, is right there. Eric, would you stand up, please? 
I want everybody to know you. Okay, he didn't know I was gonna do this. But Eric, Eric is gonna be my assistant golf pro. And uh, uh, you can sit down, Eric, you don't have to stay there. But uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, he graduated from college. And I got to fly down and it's, I did, honestly, it was crazy. It was, you know, it's cold here, right? So I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna wear a suit and do this thing. And, and I didn't, really didn't even pay attention to where I was going, but it was in LA. And I got there and it was hot. I was burning up. And so uh, it was hilarious. But Eric showed me around his campus and ironically, he graduated from the master's university. And I remember sitting there in the, on the campus watching this and their, their graphic was a lot like the master's golf tournament, which is here. Not, they don't have the, the way they've spelled the master's. And uh, I remember sitting there going, you know what, if I ever do a message, I might speak on the master. And uh, about a week, two later, Pastor Phil calls, and I go, well, I know what my message is going to be. So, so <laughs> the message is called, all that to get to this, the message is called Jesus the Master. Okay? He is the master of masters. Yes. Yes. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. Amen. A master, by definition, is a teacher, a master of, self-controlled, a master builder. He's a master over. He exercises absolute ownership rights. He's the Lord. He's the owner. Amen. He knows what he's doing. Amen. Comes from the Greek, 1320, didaskalos, an instructor, a doctor, a master, a teacher. John 13, 13 said, you call me master and Lord? You say, well, for so I am. He knows he is, right? And the amazing thing is he wants to know us. He's not just a master at one thing, he's the master at all life. Why did he come from heaven? Why did he come down? John 10, John 10, 10 says, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. Our master came to teach us how to live the way he designed us. He came to teach us to live an abundant life. How should we live? I had Catherine, uh, thank you so much, Catherine. She came up with this little graphic that's going to show us uh, an acronym of LIVE. And the first letter, LIVE, is going to be love. And ta-da, you know, you would, ex you would expect it to be love, right? <laughs> that's, it's not a trite point, you guys. Right. Uh, thousands of messages have been spoken on love. But listen to this verse. Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, accomplish infinitely more, infinitely more than we might ask or think. He wants us to experience his love. I've watched the Masters since I was a kid, since 1986, when Jack Nicklaus won his last time. I don't think I've missed one Masters. But when I experienced it, it makes me cry. I go, man. There's, it's so different when you experience it. Hearing the ball crack off the club, you just go, wow, it cracks into the, into the trees and you can hear it echo. <clears throat> so there's incredible beauty. There's something you can't really see on TV. You see flowers, but you don't see flowers, right? You smell stuff. You, you, uh, you hear the birds chirping and the breeze going through the, the trees, the roar of the crowds across the golf course. Someone does something amazing and everybody knows it. The food, you smell the food. You can't believe the food is $1.50 for a sandwich and you're like, what the heck? You know, I, I couldn't spend more than $15 a day um, food. I was like, what? I guess they, they, they know they're getting enough on the tickets, right? So they want people to have fun so they come back. Um, there's smiles in the crowd. Everybody wants to be there. They're so happy to be there. Storylines, the elevation changes. It's, it's amazing. And you know what? I didn't know that until I got there. He wants us to experience his love. He wants us to soak it in, to explore it, to listen to it, to smell it and taste it. It's too great to fully understand, it says. You know, you know when, I, when I screw up, man, he's so great to me. He says, 
He says, gosh, yeah, you messed up. And I go, Lord, how can you forgive me? And he goes, come here, son, I'm going to clean you up. That is too great to understand, you guys. It's, it's incredible. It's unbelievable. But he's, the, he's a master, and he knows how, how we, he created us to live. We can experience his love three ways. One is to spend time with him and to share what I just shared and to talk and experience his love and listen to him. There's another way, though, and it's through others. And I'll tell you what, I, I was having trouble putting this message together. And uh, I literally, I go, you know what, Lord, I, I'm not worthy of this. I actually stink at speaking. And uh, I'm, I'm just, honestly, I just go, all I can do is repent because I just, I'm, I'm sitting there going, I'm unworthy. I, I, you know, I've done some things I shouldn't have done. I was, and I, I, I just, you know how you want to kind of wallow in that a little bit? I was about five minutes into that and all of a sudden, bing, a text. And it, a friend of mine texted me that scripture we just read. And I'll tell you what, the message changed big time after that. And I thank that brother. Thank you so much for sending that to me. And the other way we can experience God's love is through his creation. And in my case, uh, a dog. And uh, my dog, when I come home, Pastor Phil shared about this yet, uh, a few weeks ago, is my dog, I mean, the girls go, why does he love you so much? He just, she, she just licks, 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 licks. And, and my dad just goes, I would never let her do that. But, you know, I, it's just awesome. She loves my earlobes and she loves all this stuff. <laughs> but I've never seen a dog more impressive than Christian, Christian Vance's dogs. I, I went out to his place and he goes, Trent, I want to show you something. And he, and he uh, um, excuse me a second. His dogs are sitting, laying there, ready to go. They're ready to go, just waiting. And he's trained them that they don't do anything until he says something. And uh, he goes, right. And they just took off. And I'm not kidding, hundreds of yards out into the field. They got these cows to, on the right side, got them back. And then he was, I don't remember the exact words that he said, but something like, back. And man, they could hear him from way off. They, they came running back. And I'm not kidding you. They jumped a six or eight foot fence, crawled up it, came back and sat at his feet. I, was, I could not believe it. Left. Bam. They went to the left side. Did the same thing. I, it, was, it was absolutely unbelievable. And those dogs loved it. They loved it. They loved being trained. They loved being his. And he treated them well. And I, I don't believe that we can experience his love any more than doing what we're built for. You know, when, you, when you're doing what you're built for, you enjoy your life. You enjoy what God's doing. And that really does lead me to my next point. We're built to invite others to experience the master. I as invite. When an amateur golfer gets invited to the masters, you better believe they change their schedule, right? They're going, they're going. It really might be their only chance. And so they're, they're going and they're going to go enjoy the whole experience. <clears throat> we need to do all we can to invite others. Amen. Give them an invitation to the master to meet him. It really could be their only chance. It could be their only time they hear about him. Right. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea in Samaria and in the uttermost part of the earth. <clears throat> no matter what your strengths are, you were built to invite people to know the master. You know what? There's dignity when we give away what we have. To me, this chart that we're doing, we're receiving, right? We're, we're, uh, we're receiving love from God. We're receiving, we're experiencing his love and then we get to give it away. So I, I really try to live, I receive and I give and I receive and I give and so this chart is gonna be about that. <clears throat> Luke 21, once, says, as Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others all these people gave gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. She gave her life. She gave all that she had. You know what? We have Jesus. We have a treasure. We have a lot to give. Are we hoarding it? 
Are we keeping it to ourselves? Are we a little bit scared to share? Or are you giving them away to others freely? Amen. You know, the master's committee can't make a person that they've invited show up. And we can't make a person that we've invited to Jesus actually receive him. Sure. But have you invited them? We are built to invite people to Jesus. After I've received and I've given and I've given the invitation, he wants me to receive again. V is for victory. Victory with the master, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who giveth, gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, victory implies that there's a challenge, right? I mean, you're not going to have victory unless something's a little bit tough. <clears throat> so Bobby Jones, I told you that he uh, built the master's course. Uh, he, his last master's that he played in, he was 46 years old. And uh, loved golf. He loved, you know, loved the game of golf. And he, he came down with a, a condition called syringe myelia. And that's where you get a cyst in your, in your back. And he honestly couldn't play anymore. And he was asked about that. And he said, you know what? Golf is the closest game to the game we call life. He says, you get bad breaks from good shots. And you get good breaks from bad shots. But you have to play the ball where it lies. And you get to go through that. <laughs> it's a really uh, amazing way to think about life. I try to take each hole when I play golf, I try to take each hole as a challenge. And I've found that sometimes my worst shots can turn into my greatest victories. And uh, an example of this, if, if I'm in the trees, I, I played with uh, Eric and uh, so my other assistant golf pro, his name is Clayton. And I was taking Eric out after he got back and, and I said, you know, I mean, I, we were kind of just playing, and it was the last five holes, and I said, okay, guys, and these guys are 25, right? And, I'm, and they practice all the time, and they're good players, and they hit it way farther than I do, and, but I wanted to make it kind of fun. I said, okay, guys, uh, last five holes, we're playing for five bucks. And so here I go, oh boy, what did I just do, you know? And, uh, and so they both hit these balls onto the green. It's a 240-yard par three. And I'm going, what am I doing playing this hole? I, you know, and uh, they both hit it onto the green, and I just yanked one into the trees. And I go, well, I got some more holes to play. I better not lose the entire hole, on the, or the entire $5 on this hole. Just, I don't want to get out of it. And uh, so I am behind a tree literally like this, and the pin's there. And I go, and I'm up against the tree, and I, I had to make a decision right there whether I was just going to quit or if I was going to try. And I go, okay, I'm going to see what these, I'm going to show these guys how, to, how you play golf, right? <laughs> so I'm standing up against this tree like this. They couldn't even see me. They're on the green, and I'm behind the tree, so they don't know if I'm cheating or what I'm doing. <laughs> but I want to do it right, so I'm standing there, and I chip it out, you know, 20 yards onto the fairway. And, you know, they, I think, I don't know what they thought. But I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do this. And so I get up there and I have about a 50 yard chip and I chip it up about 12 feet, which was, a, it was a really a good shot. And now I get up there and I have this putt that goes like this. And I, I go, I'm gonna make this thing. And uh, I did and Clayton goes, wow, that, that was going in the whole way. And you know what, I remember going, that is victory. That's a bogey, right? That's not a great score, but that was way, four is way better than five. And five is way better than six, right? And so, so when in golf, when you can, you know, pros count those strokes by millions of dollars, right? I mean, one stroke is a big deal, okay? And so um, that's victory when you go through something and you go through some things like that. And I found actually that when you're in shots like that, and I bet Eric could say the same thing, when you have a wide open fairway and you can hit it anywhere, you know, it doesn't even matter. You just get up and hit it. You don't, there's not much... There's not much thought put into it. But when you have to hit a ball out from under a tree, it's, you might hit your foot, it's so close to you. Uh, you think about things different. You actually start to focus on what you're doing. And there becomes uh, concentration happens. Jack Nicholas said, concentration is a fine antidote 
to anxiety. Bobby Jones said, some people think they are concentrating when they are merely worrying. I think that's pretty amazing, isn't it? You can, think, you can think about stuff all day long, but are you concentrating on how you're, you're going to allow Jesus to help you get through it? Right? What does he want from it? What does he have in mind for our, for our future? You know, not just, not just think about it and worry about it. So don't worry. Concentrate on his plans for you and ask him to help you in walking through the challenges. Ask him to caddy for you. You know, he's there for us, right? Okay. And the fourth point, the E is going to be after we've received victory and we get to encourage others toward the master again. Okay. First Thessalonians 5.11 says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, just as in fact you are doing. I am speaking to a church full of solid people with amazing victories. I know it. I've heard a lot of stories and incredible people. Like this Thessalonian church, we already encourage. But you know what? They were still, in, they were still reminded to do it anyway, right? We need reminding. Keep encouraging. Keep going. Keep doing. But keep encouraging people toward Jesus, toward our master, I, uh, I told you that I have an assistant pro named Clayton, and uh, he gave me permission to share this story. And so, just so you know that, because it's, kinda, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, he, his, he grew up, and his dad is a, is a believer, he prays, uh, but he, his thought was that he was going to let Clayton find his way. And, uh, and so, Clayton hasn't really gone to church much. He's... Uh, he came to our men's breakfast, loved it. He loved Aaron Schluter immensely. He, uh, he loves Jesse Weaver. Jesse plays golf out at our place, and I, Clayton and him were partners in uh, our simulator league. And uh, uh, he, he really does love the people, and actually he just listened to a message by Pastor Phil called The New Path, or Our New Path, right? And he just goes, Pastor Phil's an incredible speaker. But he came to me and he goes, uh, he goes you know what, I'm, not, I'm having trouble sleeping. I just, I don't even know why. I don't know what's going on. I, and, uh, you know, it's real easy to give kind of tried answers. But as I heard, I listened to the Holy Spirit and he goes, you know what? Um, I said, Clayton, I think that when you're having trouble sleeping, I think God wants to speak to you. I think, you know, why don't you just listen to him next time? Just listen to him. And he's like, you know, you could tell that he was, you know, God might, doesn't speak. I don't even know what you're talking about. I, you know, I'm not sure that that's going to work, but okay. So, so a couple days later, he comes back and he goes, you know what? I tried what you said. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, uh, I got home. I was having trouble sleeping. And, you know, he's funny how he says stuff to me. He's just kind of, and he's, he's got cool antics. And he goes, yeah, I just put my head up like this, got myself ready. And, and then I just kind of go, all right, Lord, speak to me, you know, and that's, <laughs> He goes, I'm ready. I'm ready to listen. And he just kind of put himself in a place to hear God. And he said, all of a sudden, he heard the Lord say, I want you to call your grandma. And he goes, that's kind of weird. I mean, he really felt like he heard something. So he calls his grandma, and she goes, I can't believe you just called me. She goes, wow. She goes, I, I, I really needed someone. She goes, I, I just got my third diagnosis of breast cancer. And I really don't know what to do. I really needed to talk to somebody. And he was able to share with her and encourage her and, and be there for her. And, and he got off the phone and he goes, what in the world? You know, I, he goes, man, that's just weird. You know, is that a coincidence? Whatever. So he goes, you know what? I wanted to try it again. So I put my hat up. <laughs> listen. I listen. You know, and all of a sudden he says, you know what God told me? I'll call my sister. So he calls his sister. And she goes, I can't believe you just called me. I don't, she goes, my car broke down. I'm at work. I don't know. I need to get home. I'm, you know, my car broke down. I didn't even know what I was going to do. And you called. And he was able to talk her through and get her car started and, and uh, really help her. And you know what? He got off the phone. And, you know, like I said, he's, he's not a believer. So, or he, he's not, he doesn't know the Lord, you know, as well as, as, he, as, he, as he does now. But he, uh, he goes, 
what the H-E double L happened? <laughs> he just, he could not believe it. He, you know, and you're, and you're, you're just talking about, he's just, he goes, he goes, Trent, he was telling me, I cannot believe it. He goes, I am, he goes, I slept so well. He goes, he goes, I know that God wants something in my life. I know God, God's real, you know. And so he is, you know, he's so much bigger. God is so much bigger than we are, you know, than me to try to lead him through something and help him to, you know, I just invited him to listen to Jesus and to hear the Lord. And uh, uh, last night, so, so yesterday was his last day. He actually, it was weird. I mean, all of a sudden he's hearing the Lord and all of a sudden, and then uh, this, this uh, golf course in Canada calls him and says, hey, I want you to be our head pro. And that was a real shock. They said, I need you here by June 1st. And I go, wow, that changed my life quick because he, he really is an amazing assistant pro. And uh, I just told him, I said, you know, God's got you. He's got, and I said, could I just share with you? And so last night he received Jesus. And, uh, and uh, it was so cool. So, so we as a church, if you think about it, keep praying for him because uh, God's, God's got him and, and he's got a lot for his life. He's got a lot, a lot uh, that he wants to do in this young man. And so, <clears throat> Lord, we thank you that you're the master. <laughs> you know what, Lord? You can do all this we talked about with your eyes closed. You're amazing, amazing, amazing God. Thank you for allowing us to experience your love. Thank you for wanting to use us to invite others to you. Thank you for your victory. And Lord, thank you for your encouragement in our lives. Help us to encourage others. Help us to live for you, Master. Yes, Lord. Yes. We love you so much. And thank you for your promises. Amen. Amen. All right.